I was proposed to sell my 20% shares of the company. We've tried to solve problem and that's how we got upscale. Scaled it, got value $21.5 million in only nine months. Vova Sadkov, the founder of EC. A gamified NFT Fi and social Fi platform that made waves early in the year with a massively successful test net. I think that the easiest thing is to sit there and think what really drives you. Somebody like to drink coffee, make the best coffee store. You like to play tennis, make your tennis equipment. The best headband for tennis. Just sit there and be honest with yourself. What really drives you? What is EC and what are you guys trying to achieve? We are building a gamified marketplace. We are just lowering the cost barrier to enter to the market. We are making it fun and easy way for users to get into the market. We are not targeting big whales. We are targeting the mass audience who want to feel inside the community, who want to feel inside the market. That's basically what we're doing. People outside crypto think that crypto is a blockchain. Crypto is not blockchain. Crypto is one of the use cases mm. of blockchain. What will move crypto forward is RWAs, real world assets. So you know how to take a business from zero to 100. You've done it three times already. Take me back to the short version journey of the first two businesses. So the first one. Let's start with the basics. Who are you? I'm Bova. I'm the founder and the CEO. Uh, five years into different startups. Started with traditional IT, with the educational technology a startup, uh, then moved into the medical technology, uh, scaled both, uh, sold my shares, moved to Dubai, started with crypto. All in the mix, super short, but yeah, that's, that's who I am at the moment. At the moment, I'm the CEO and the founder of a startup that we call EC. And uh, yep, just uh, leading the team, uh, building. I'm like, I must say that if in short, I'm a true builder. That's who I am. So you identify your entire persona around your business. Yep, yep, exactly. So just, yeah, like from the very first uh, days when I remember myself, always wanted to create something. I always had ideas, uh, wanted to bring those ideas into life. And then uh, just uh, when I was studying in college, uh, I ended up uh, studying economic studies and business studies and my teacher, I'm super thankful to him. Uh, he told me like, look, uh, I think that you have something inside you that uh, there are people who can create ideas and make those ideas uh, like, like products that they, are, they will be used by people. And there are people who are uh, just helping to bring those ideas into life. I think that you are first person and it really like it really got me. I was like thinking that, look, yeah, I can, I can be a builder. Why do you think he said that? What did he see that might have been different from other kids that made him say that? I think that uh, I always hear this and constantly up to the, up until like even today, I'm constantly thinking and that's the case. I'm constantly thinking, uh, but it has a lot of downsides, to be honest. Of course. But yeah, it has a lot of downsides, but it has its upsides as well. Mm -hmm. I'm constantly thinking. I'm thinking about some cool ideas. I'm thinking about how to bring those ideas in life. I'm thinking about uh, how to not like make those ideas problems, how to solve those tasks and everything like this. So yeah, constantly just thinking and probably he, he saw it. He saw it because we were like, well, he was not like a teacher, but more like mentor. Mm. And yeah, that's, that's the case. What are some of the downsides of thinking constantly? Uh, I think that overthinking is always not too, not too good. Uh, just and uh, overcomplicating is a big part of the problem, I think. And overthinking is, for me, it equals to overcomplicating things. Mm -hmm. uh, cool solutions and cool uh, tasks, like, Cool solutions, they are always easy to make, I think. And uh, just, yeah, when you're constantly thinking, I'm trying to chill myself sometimes. How uh, do you do that? Uh, how do you, how do you deal with your over, overthinking mind? Uh, I think that, look, uh, I have several ways. First way is that you have to have somebody by your side with whom you can talk. I think the talk is the best meditation. Uh, just then not talk with a random person, but talk with somebody who understands you. And uh, just, uh, I have my twin brother. He's like, I'm two minutes older than him, but we are like all our life together. So he knows me like I know myself probably even more and I know him. So it's always easy for me to talk to him 
sometimes it's cool if you have good uh, energy with your girlfriend you can as well talk mm. to her i just always uh, share my vision share my ideas thoughts and all that stuff so for me best meditation is to talk 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 it out and just uh, in the process of talking you find the solution and as well i don't know how to say this in english you know that board of sadhu where it's has the needles mm -hmm. or something like this mm -hmm. uh when i was in bali i just i like people showed me this thing mm -hmm. and i just fell in love i ordered it and uh, just once a week i stand on those and it's just it's a cool practice i i don't know i don't know why i like it but since the first time that i stood up on those boards uh it's called board of sadhu right i think so yeah yeah boards of sadhu so yeah and uh, just first time i've tried it i've tried it on the top of the uh, vulcan nice okay and i would just i felt enough and i think in bali in bali yeah and uh, just uh, i'm trying trying to uh, fit in uh like two twice per week but once per week it uh, helps me to uh, get my thoughts right do you meditate uh no i'm not meditating at the moment i just i have a lot of friends who tell me that look you have to meditate you mm. need to meditate it will be like it will be a super add-on but no at the moment no i think that look uh i'm just i'm not in that uh period of my life i'll get to that period and i'll be meditating i think that it will be a cool habit that i will have but look at the moment i think that uh, just just not yet not yet do you yeah. meditate absolutely every day since probably 2017. How, how do so you do it? You just sit down, close your eyes and do nothing for 15 minutes. And what happens is actually, I wanted to, t to talk to you about that because it's probably as a founder is so important and it's going to change your life on two fronts. One is building your tolerance to stress. Basically you increase your tolerance to stress a lot. Why? Very simple is. You just have to see meditation as first there's nothing to do, right? It is not you have to there's some apps or you know, you can you, you, you focus on your breath. Like it's more, hey, you do nothing and you sit still. And it's extremely difficult to sit still, especially in the beginning, because you have all these thoughts, right? But you're you like you try not to think about anything. It's not that. You don't try anything. That's the that's the key thing. And when you have all these thoughts that will automatically come up, you label them. Ah, this is the funny thought of me being scared of that, being scared of going to this podcast because it's the first time I do it, you know, uh, face to face. Or ah, this is the f this thought of you. You, do, you don't comment them. It's not positive or negative. It's ah, this is the thought of you know the TG not going well, or ah, my business is not going to work, or ah, my girlfriend doesn't like me, or and when you do that, the same as you said before, speaking is the best meditation, right? When you label things. It's the same as some people, they talk about journaling, right? It's yeah. kind of similar. When you label things, it just help you process these thoughts because you have all these unprocessed thoughts. And the problem is in your sure. unconscious, you have all these unprocessed thoughts and they just come on the top of each other. And it's probably 10, 15, 20 years of unprocessed thoughts, right? What happens is when you sit down every day for 10, 15, 20 minutes, you start to unwind these unprocessed thoughts and process them one after the other. And processing doesn't mean it's good, it's bad, or I shouldn't think about that. It's just, just talk with yourself. It's right? just, not even, it's just you label them, done, right? And then the storm of thoughts is just going to calm down. It's, they're still there, but they're calm because they're labeled, right? They're, they're processed. And after 60 days or 70 days or 50 days, obviously it's not a three days thing, right? Of course. Most of your thoughts the biggest ones will be processed, right? And because they're processed, they're not gonna be driving you mad anymore. And you're just gonna be able to, first you're gonna be much more self-aware, and second you'll be able to think every morning, you will sit and every morning you will have thoughts, positive and probably negative ones because our brain is wired to look at negative stuff, right? And, but you will know, okay, this is just this thought about my relationship or my business and I, you will also realize it's normal to have them right and the moment you it's processed it doesn't bother you anymore and your tolerance to stress just increased massively right and so and also obviously you're probably you have your best ideas you, know, you could have them under the shower or when you run 
meditation is an amazing moment to have the best ideas. You don't even think about them, but because you're, f you know, we always say like sleep over something, right? I'll sleep over it for two or three days and then I'll find a solution. Usually during meditation, you have your best ideas coming. Amazing. But because you leave the space, you basically build that space for your best um, kind of ideas to come to life, which if you're constantly clouded in your mind with all your negative thoughts, it's extremely difficult, if not impossible to Yeah, I'll definitely do. try it, man. So Probably I think you've explained meditation to me like the easiest way that everybody explained just it to me. just take your, your phone, you, put, you set an alarm. First thing in the morning, you wake up, sit in your bed. And another very good, um, it's very important, right? Because you will see if you are underslept or not. If you are underslept, you're probably gonna fall asleep or you're not gonna meditate well. You're gonna be like, man, my meditation was shit today. So you become very, every day you have an anchor on how good my sleep is. Obviously you can yeah. use whoop and aura ring and all that stuff, right? But it's a very good way to kind of have a benchmark every day on like, where am I good? Uh, am I doing well? Yes, not. And as we said before, if the sleep is not there, nothing is there, right? Yeah. Amazing, man. I'll definitely try it. <laughs> I'll definitely try it and I'll, I'll get back to you with my feedback. So you're building uh, your third business and you're in your mid twenties. Where does this fire in the belly come from? Oh, that's a tough one. To be honest with you, I think that uh, when I've tried it first time, uh, it was this cool feeling when you had something in your head, then you had something on the paper, then you had people working on this, and now you have people using it. And this is if like probably like a lot of people, they stop when the first time is not successful. But probably for me, I, I'm not saying that my first time was super successful, but first time it worked out. And I think this was the driver. It gave me a possibility. It gave me an answer saying that, look, uh, if this worked out, if this time worked out, you can have ideas and you can try and it will work out. I think this is what happened. And I've just, I've started even, uh, to be honest with you, I've started even younger. I've started when I was 17. I was uh, doing uh, concert shows and uh, just uh, dancing festivals, uh, just organizing them, organizing them. Yeah. And uh, just uh, I've seen that a lot of young teenagers uh, when where I grew up, I grew up in Moscow in Russia. I've seen that a lot of for young teenagers, they like to dance. They like to it was like a era of hip hop and R&B and all that stuff. And I was not dancing. I'm not good at dancing. I understood to be into the community. I needed to create something. I needed to make myself interesting to those guys. So I decided to arrange the venues where they are going to show their skills. And that's what I've done. So the, the initial drive is what was to be part of a community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it was saying sense of belonging. Very, yes, yes, okay, of course, very interesting. So I think I think that, yeah, I think uh, just uh, it's it's super common. I think it's common for most uh, guys at that age that I was 17 years old. You have to have a community around yourself. You have to have friends that share your interests and all that stuff. So I've just I've started doing that uh, uh, organizing entrepreneurship. I'd say it like this. And but it was not too long. I've just I've seen that. OK, it was successful. Mm. I've made some money. I've made some good content uh, contacts. I've just I felt myself like I'm needed into that community. So basically, yep, that's how it started. And then like uh, businesses and entrepreneurship started getting more serious, more serious, more serious. And now I'm here speaking with you. <laughs> so it's kind of like a, a, a progressive thing, yeah. right? I, I had a very similar experience. Actually, when I was 16, I was DJing, organizing buses, you know, two, three buses, 200 people taking them with me to a club, starting to organize these big parties. At some point, we were like 5,000 people. And it was never out of, I want to make money or anything. It was just, hey, I want to do something cool. This is cool. It's just like a gut feeling, you know? Yeah. I have to do that. And every business after that was that. The right moment, the inception of the moment is like, oh, there's a problem. I want to solve this problem and I have to do that. I just feel like there is no other thing I would be doing right now. 
yeah. but progressively you build the confidence, right? I, I was able to do this small thing. I can do something a bit bigger and a bit bigger and a bit bigger. And that's how you... I think that's the case that happened uh, like when I was building. That's, that's the case. Uh, you started with something small and then you are here with something not too big, but relatively big comparing to the first mm. uh, business that you mm. had. Which shows you how amazing the the power of the mind and even the kind of human brain is because we might think that we have some limitations, but we don't, actually we don't. Yep. The more you push, the more you realize, fuck man. I mean, that's what people call a bit uh, as a stereotype, the, the comfort zone, right? Yeah. Get out of your comfort zone. Like if you really push, I mean, you should not be too much outside because if you're too far outside, you're probably gonna burn out, right? But if you're always slightly outside of your comfort zone and you're always like at the edge, and you're kind of like you're suffering. It. You're, you're extending it. You're kind of like suffering, right? It doesn't feel, it never feels good, but at the same time, it feels good because you have the adrenaline and the kick of like building these things. That's where like uh, the, the growth is. You said you, I mean, obviously you grew up in Russia. At some point you decided to move to Dubai, why? Uh, that's not the first place where I moved. Uh, by f firstly, when I was something like 11, 12, I moved to China. Mm. I've lived there one year, uh, like a student exchange program. Uh, I've studied, I've tried to study Chinese. When you were 11? Yes, 11, 12, 11-ish, 11 11-ish. 11 How do you I'd end say. up in China when you're 11 years uh, old? Whose idea is that? Uh, my mom. It was an Your idea mom. of my mom. We, like, we studied in school, of course, and the school has this ex had this exchange program. Uh, where you could uh, like Chinese students will come to Russia to study Russian Russian students will come to China to study Chinese of course and we just uh, me and my brother we ended up in uh, Shanghai Beijing and Dalian uh, just we studied calligraphy language and all that stuff uh, just uh, to be honest with you I still can count uh, from 100 to from 1 to 100 on Chinese I know how to say my name is Vova and all that stuff not a lot of things I remember on Chinese, but still, it was a good experience showing that, look, uh, it showed me back in the days that I cannot, like, we can uh, make other place comfortable for us as well, mm. not only the one where we grew up. And then after that, uh, we, just, we returned back to Moscow, uh, then we were, like, when I started uh, studying languages, when we started, like, when we started showing uh, some good results in the education. Uh, we were invited to participate in Andrew Cambridge Foundation uh, College program, a business studies economics program in Marbella, Andalusia, Spain. Uh, we've ended up being there, lived in Spain for five years. And you lived in Spain for five years? Yes. So you speak Spanish? Yes. I was Spanish también. Si, si, si. Perfect. Ah, was, nice. That's was, so cool. I was a lot of Spanish. <laughs> wow. Podemos hacer el podcast en español si quieres. Sí. <laughs> Our, uh, That's so cool. Okay. Um, so Spain five years. Yeah, Spain five years. Then as well, again, returned back to Moscow and then felt that, look, uh, I want to give, I have a small brother as well. I have a small brother and uh, I just, I always thought that, look, when I will have children, I want to give them education that I got as well in the, in Spain, in international college, 30 plus nationalities, a lot of cool kids. Uh, just uh, really cool education where your teacher practices. So it's like if you study math, he's the mathematician. If he just gives you any education on business studies, he's the he's practicing business. I think that education has to be like this. So I thought that look, if when I will have uh, children, I want to give them this education. Mm -hmm. And then when I grew up a bit uh, older, I thought that look, well, like I don't have children now, but what. Uh, just uh, what's the point of waiting for children if I can do the same thing for my brother, for my small brother. So I wanted to get him an international education. Uh, now he studies in Harriet Watt University in here in Dubai. So that was the primary case why I ended up here. Mm. I just, we sent his documents. Uh, he passed the test. They accepted him. We came here. I came here, like primarily I came here to study uh, like to make my brother study in international university and then I got uh, in a lot of communities of crypto related stuff web3 deep dived into all those researches and everything like this and he just uh, really I, I can say that I fell in love with crypto uh, even I'd say that look I not, did not fell in love with crypto but I fell in love with blockchain because so the reason so you 
So the reason you're doing crypto is because you brought your brother to Dubai. We can <laughs> we can link it like That's this. That's amazing. We can link it like this. Wow. So People end up in crypto in various <laughs> different ways. Yeah, but that's ways, the so. most interesting like <laughs> story, to be honest. Usually it's kind of like very often similar reasons. I mean, all of the similar reasons, but not yours. So you know how to take a business from zero to a hundred. You've done it three times already. Take me back to the short version journey of the first two businesses. Uh, so the first one, uh, educational technology platform, uh, we were uh, taking bloggers, influencers, uh, small entrepreneurs. We were unpacking their knowledge and making educational courses. That's what we're doing. We were like an outsource uh, company, basically. And uh, at some point it started scaling like crazy uh, because like back in the days we were like nearly like only ones in the CIS region who were doing this. And uh, we started like, we started expanding the team. We started, uh, doing a lot of marketing, we started doing our own researches and we scaled it up until something like nine to 10 million ARR. We've been doing this for two and a half years and we, we had something like 150,000 plus users, mm. like the students uh, who completed programs. So this was like, this was the first major success for me. I'm not saying that it's like a multi-million company, but for the guy, from like the most common family and uh, without uh, super like business knowledge, it was a success for me. And uh, yes, I know how to uh, create an idea in your head, think that yes, I think that I'm going to try it and actually try it to at least make it used by some people. And just uh, as a final result, at least you will just you will get benefits from this business. So when as well, you will make other people benefit from it as well. So this was the first one. What happened afterwards? Uh, then just uh, when the COVID started happening, I thought that, look, uh, when uh, there is one interesting thing with myself, when I see that people are uh, chilling, people are taking some time to rest, I think that, look, uh, there is a not a lot of competition right now we can do something uh, that's like that's uh, why i thought that look when the COVID started happening uh, i thought that look why not we try to deep dive into medtech medical technology startup and we started uh, we just very fast in something like two months we've arranged the engineering development and production and selling in-house of our hardware Hardware that helped to sterilize, hardware that helped to... Now, I'll give you several examples. First of all, we've just, we've developed the box where you can put your belongings and all of that stuff, and it sterilized phones, masks, and all of that stuff into the market of the CS. Then second one was that we've created the remote like round device with the sterilization function that you can put in the bag of the delivery guy. When the delivery is happening, mm. uh, probably there is some germs or some crazy stuff that uh, children will not uh, like well, which parents will not to have on the deliver of their children or basically like older nation or something like this and we just uh, we conducted a lot of banks delivery or just branches and as well we've done one more device for the car sharing companies where you are entering the car it stops when you're exiting from the car, the sterilization sanitization process happening. So it was a completely so, COVID driven business, yes, right? Yes. It Taking was a, the COVID as an opportunity. Yes. And yes. building some actual very useful solutions to the COVID problem. Yes. I think that uh, I've already said this uh, in different interview that I was doing in my native language. But I think that uh, here on our podcast with you, this idea will be as well valuable. Look, you have to, when you are creating idea, of course, you can get the opportunity of some something happening in the world, mm. but you don't have to, like, it's always better for you not to have an opportunity just for yourself, but to make it valuable. Because the long-term business, it will be like, it will be beneficial for you only if it's going to be beneficial for users as Absolutely. well, for the final users. So basically we've tried to solve problem 
we've solved the problem and that's how we got upsell upscale I mean and that's that's basically that's my second business uh, scaled it uh, nine years period of time got valued 21 pulp Point five million dollars, and as well, I was asked to sell. I was proposed to sell my twenty percent shares of the company. That's what I've done. After two years, uh, it was this business. We we've been doing this for only nine months. Nine months. Yeah. We've scaled it super fast. We've wow. scaled it super fast. It just uh, it was a matter of uh, of an outreach. I've just uh, I've outreached everywhere to every single company, even like even to those companies that I didn't think that they need those devices, like banks. Why would banks need those? Mm. But banks have like the loyalty think that loyalty KPIs and all of that stuff. So like I just outreached because why not? The banks have a lot of branches. They have a lot of points uh, everywhere. Yeah. And uh, just banks told me that, look, we can put those devices where users can put their cards, phones, and everything on every single desk. That's how it happened. It's like that's how the scaling happened. Super, super great. And then, as well, again, small banks do this. Middle banks see and repeat, and then biggest banks do the same thing. So that's, that's maybe that's, a, maybe a really interesting factor here is. Of your success is going to be determined by your actions. Of course. But something that people don't understand when they start a company is you can build the best product or, you know, but at the end of the day, the more you try everything, almost with closed eyes, you don't know what's going to work. There's a strategy always, but it, ne it barely, you know, it, it's barely what you plan, what you plan that's going to happen is more like, hey, I'm going to try everything la like if I'm going to die. And if I do that, it's almost impossible for me not to be successful, provided that people need my product or service, right? And that's why sometimes for me, I kind of struggle. These people who think, oh, yeah, but you know, you should calm down, KV. I'm like, no, I'm not fucking calming down. It's not the moment. I'll calm down in two years, right? Now is the moment to be at this edge, almost destroy yourself. Obviously, you don't want to die on the fly. But like, because it's kind of like, it's when we say take the leap and the, the net will appear, it's that, right? Or when you say, hey, you need to jump and then kind of build a plane on the fly before you crash, it's that. And it's the more you go and try different things, the more you have a chance to have a plane that's kind of functionable before you crash the floor and then you can fly towards, uh, towards the moon, right? Yep. Consistency and a bit of fortune. But the fortune is is provoked, right? Is made. It's not like yeah, yeah, coming course, from the, course, of course, of course. and that's a very important, actually, uh, uh, important learning, especially from your uh, experience, because you're saying, oh man, the one that gave me the most scale is the one I expected the least, right? So it shows, hey, like you need to try everything, like, like a, like a degenerate almost, and 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 things will work out. Sure, sure. That's that's a fact. That's a fact. The more you try, the more possibilities you have. Like why you will uh, take those possibilities away from yourself. Absolutely. So after nine months, you stop? Yeah, I've stopped. Uh, we've uh, received investments. We've received investments once. So we've received investments twice. And then the company that invested in us, they've told, look, you're young. I was uh, 20, like in my early 23rd year. Uh, just uh, they've told, look, you're young. Uh, if we will start creating big team, we will arrange an office and all of that stuff. You will have to work for us for the rest of your life. But we can help you to cash out with a slightly discounted valuation. Of course, you know how it happens. But then I just uh, I thought that, look, I'm not ready to sacrifice everything for the thing that like I'm not a medical technology person. Mm -hmm. Let's call it like this. I've just seen the opportunity. I've done this opportunity. Let's move on. That's the case. And uh, I can't. I don't see anything wrong in this approach because just if I did something that is beneficial for people, that's cool. I just I was in right time, in the right moment, in somebody's life maybe hmm. with that product. So I just thought that look. Of course, it was not like the uh, probably probably 
that's not the best decision that I would make back in the days. But but still, it's like it was a part of the game. It was a part of the life. So I just I think that it was a wise decision. But still, uh, and yeah, I've sold my twenty percent of shares of the company and just yeah, moved on. Never never thought back. Moved on to the third. Uh, to, to be honest with you, like thing. when I when I finished this medical technology a startup, uh, I didn't know what to do next. I didn't straight have an idea. So what do you do? Because that's the case for a lot of people. Even you know, let's say mid twenties or early thirties, have a career, kind of feel stuck. What do you do when you don't know what to do? Uh, look, I'll tell you. Uh, life will give you something that you will be interested in in my case it's crypto and you know like i've already told how it happened mm. with crypto it's like of uh, you i never uh, to be honest with you firstly i didn't even know what's like long short what's those <laughs> like uh <laughs> letters mean like nothing i literally knew nothing about crypto Three years ago, I knew nothing mm. about crypto. And of course, I talk now with those guys who are like, oh, I'm in crypto since 2017. I'm in crypto since 2016. Of course, those guys have like super extensive background and super extensive knowledge. But I was not that type of the guy. I like, of course, I could say that, look, I'm a crypto OG, 2017 class, and traded Bitcoin when it was not mainstream. Never did it. I'm, mm. I'm not like uh, it, it's always very to be transparent not to be Absolutely. like and so I, I think that uh, back to your question life will definitely give you something that you will be interested in it can be cars it can be crypto it can be maybe anything yeah. really it can be anything you just have to feel that that's yours and then you start thinking about look i'll tell you based on my example what did i think i've never traded crypto i've never flipped coins i've never flipped nfts i've just i didn't use this because i had money from an exit and i was like it's uh i didn't see this as an opportunity to make money mm. I'll, I'll put it like this but i seen this as a cool technology and again, back to the thing that I've told you, when I see that there is no competition into the market, I think that, look, it's a cool market. Because in here, my competitive advantage is that I'm consistent. I can uh, just, I can try, try, try. I will fail 100 times uh, reaching out to the person, but then I will reach out 102nd time and he will reply back to me, Man, absolutely, it's a game. Appreciate your hustle. You just you got me. It's a game. You got me. absolutely, and that happened. <laughs> like literally, they think that this example that uh, I'm telling you, it happened. Yeah. And basically, just uh, you start thinking, what can you bring to the market of the thing that's interesting to you that can be used by people. I thought that look, uh, crypto is not widely used. Why the why crypto is not widely used? I started with one thing that's uh, always a good thing to start with, customer development. Just talking, talking, talking. Uh, coming to different communities, asking them what the pain points are and all that stuff. I just, it happened to me that I went to the NFT rooftop. It's called NFT rooftop meetup. And uh, it had a lot of whales. It had a lot of just retailers, a lot of just normal users and all of those guys i've just i've uh, went and asked what's like what's not in the market that you would like to have they've told me some of them told me that look we are i, I just i constantly say this one phrase because i remember this how it was put and it was put very interesting way we contribute to the market with attention we contribute to the market with time but some of the guys they can't contribute to the market with money because of the high price barrier and this barrier is way bigger than technical barrier for those guys who are already into the market. So I've just decided that, look, we need to somehow try to solve this cost barrier. That's how we've created the gamified marketplace. But that's the different story. But just coming back to the, like, let's say the playbook of the founder, uh, just you have to find something that you're interested in. You have to get yourself into the community you have to talk with the community to ask them what do they need. That's like first three steps. Mm. 
because you started to talk about it, what is the project you're working on now? What is EC? And what are you guys trying to achieve? Uh, we are building a gamified marketplace uh, for digital assets, tokens, tokenized RWAs. Uh, what we are trying to achieve, we want to match supply and demand. I see the big problem that supply and demand on this type of the market, it's not matched. And this is a big problem because there are a lot of people who are, again, contributing to the market with time, with attention, but they haven't got a chance to contribute to the market with money because of the high cost barrier. And what we are doing, we are just lowering the cost barrier to enter to the market. By making this super gamified, we are making those action-based raffles, we are making those uh, ticketed sales systems, we are making it uh, fun and easy way for users to get to the market, get into the market. I'd say it like this. And as well, we are bringing users closer to the community of like-minded individuals. All these, let's say, uh, we are not targeting big whales, we are not targeting the wealthy individuals, we are targeting retailers, we are targeting the mass audience who want to feel inside, who want to, who want to feel inside the community, who want to feel inside the market. That's basically what we're doing. How do you build a, a crypto company when you have no previous experience and you can feel intimidated. Because just taking part into the crypto ecosystem as an employee or as an investor already can feel very intimidating, but you just came there as a builder with basically no previous experience and kind of no understanding of the ecosystem, right? To be transparent with you, when I started hearing some uh, words like uh, the crypto terminology, <laughs> Uh, even word market maker was for me like yeah. it was a sin probably a synonym to magician like <laughs> somebody in here in crypto makes market he's making the market <laughs> i was like how people deal with it even i want to be that guy <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> who yeah. does that well, he's like a president he was like it was it was for me it was strange for me it was yeah. sometimes stressful uh, but look uh, but to be honest with you, when you know how to read, when you know how to talk, it's like uh, it's not hard for you to uh, become an expert in anything. I'm not saying that I'm a crypto expert. I've never said it like this to anybody. But I just uh, I have a good leadership aspect. I have a good like I know how to be a leader. I know how to a lot of people tell me even like the mentors, advisors and all of those guys, they tell me that, look, you have kind of superpower to unite wise individuals around your own ideas. This is what helps me. And I think that this is the skill that can be achieved by anyone. Just you have to believe in what you're doing. Mm. You have to wish like for what you're doing. You have to be like really keen in what you're doing. That's the thing. If you are like, if you are making people ill with your idea, this is this is basically that's the success and, and it's actually i mean you have to be a very good salesperson for that and you they need to feel the enthusiasm yeah, yeah. but it's actually it's a bit scary because it's actually easier than it sounds because there could be not much behind that's a big problem in crypto actually a bunch of like these mega projects crypto is very narrative driven right so you had some mega project taking on crazy proportions because the narrative was amazing, but the kind of like technology didn't really follow up, right? And so it's really easy or easier than we think even to go to the bigger people in the space and kind of onboard them in your idea if you're a good storyteller, right? Which is an amazing skill, but it's also kind of scary because you sure. might at some point realize, fuck man, now these people trust me, like, but they don't realize that this shit is not built yet, right? Or maybe sure. I don't know what I'm talking about, you know? So then for like to make this thing to uh, overcome something like this, you have to have just a expertized person in your own team. Absolutely. Who will be like, who will be close to you? Who will be that close to you that he will tell you, man, we are building some shit. If we are building some <laughs> shit. If like, uh, not just like a fanatic, yeah. but just a re realistically thinking person. Yeah. I have my CTO on this position. When I'm coming to him and saying, look, man, this idea is going to kill, 
this idea is just like huge. He's telling me, look, this idea works like this and this works like this. Of course, we can do it like this, but I'm based on my expertise. I'm advising you to make it like this and it's more realistic. You have to have this type of mm. person. Mm. I'm like, I'm always a supporter of uh, the ideology of two founders in a startup. I understand why even investors and VCs and accelerators, they always, like everybody likes successful solo founder mm. if they get successful. But until they got successful, solo founder is a tricky part. Yeah. Even like based on my previous startups, I always had a founder. Yeah. I always had a founder. We always say f uh, faster alone, further together. Yes. Yes. And it's completely Absolutely. true. So we are doing something a bit different today. You've built three businesses already. So the goal today is to record what we talked about before, right? Which is a founder's playbook podcast, because we want to help other founders sure. out there who are kind of struggling at different stages of their entrepreneurship journey. So you talked about before already the, this kind of idea, ideation phase, right? How, how do you find the business idea? You said, hey, look, you, you talk to people, you ask people and you try to find a problem, right? First thing I think that still, uh, but I think that if I would have practiced meditation, I think that ideas will come easier. But look, uh, for somebody who is completely new to any kind of business, to any kind of entrepreneurship, I think that the easiest thing is to sit there and think what really drives you. Passion. What really drives you? And What's your passion? Like, every like every human being Absolutely. has something probably somebody like to drink coffee make the best coffee store mm. make your own coffee bins the best ones make like anything you like to play tennis amazing make yourself a school of tennis for kids make yourself uh, uh, your tennis equipment the best one the best headband for tennis the like it's it's about it we can continue and continue about anything mm -hmm. you just have to have this thing in you if you're entrepreneur you want to we will we will move forward to the topic of the risk factor but still like when you are thinking about starting forget about the risk if you already thought that look i want to create something if those guys who are listening to us right now probably i think that like a lot of people want to have their own uh like business or something like even not a big business but something their own i think that just sit there and be honest with yourself what really drives you not what would be cool to build because let's say maybe some people look at us and everybody will say that look we want to build in crypto mm. it's like it's it's not cool to build something that you think that it's cool to build and you're not going to last at it. You're not going to sustain yeah, 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 the ups course, and downs because you don't have the, the, the underlying passion that's going to help you it's last. It's like a lot of a lot of examples. Like people are buying uh, flats, apartments in downtown because it's like it's cool it, to live in downtown. But then they are living there and they like it's a real life example. And uh, just my friend tells me, look, I bought it the flat in downtown for for a lot of money just because I wanted to like show off for people. I live in downtown, everything, but I like grass. I like when it's green outside and I could save twice as much buying something near the water or near that like green area and be happier, but be happier, <laughs> way happier <laughs> for like. And it's like it's uh, it's super correlated with the business ideas, because if you are starting building something because your friend thinks crypto is cool, uh, you will not last at it. But if you are building something for yourself, if you're building something that you think that, okay, it's really cool and I'll be the best at it. So let's say you found your passion, right? How do you start? So you talked about co-founders before. Yep. So uh, before co-founders, uh, first of all, you find your passion. Second thing, uh, if the problem of the passion that you have is not clear to you. The problem I mean that you can solve with your product or service or company or business or anything. If it's clear, then okay, you now have, have a product. 
the product, I mean like the project, product, platform, anything. I will call it the product. If you have the product, then you move to the stage of co-founder. I always do it like this myself. But if the product is not specified for you, go and talk. Go and talk with the tennis players if you chose tennis. Go and talk with coffee drinkers if you chose coffee and all of that stuff. Become a part of the community. If you're not in the, in the community, they like to say that if, you're, if your company is not in the internet, your, your company doesn't exist. If you are not into the community, you will not be able to solve the problem of the community. Mm. That's the case. Nobody is going to use your product. If you are thinking that, look, a lot of people have these insane ideas, uh, that uh, they just came to their head, but they're not going to get used. And that's a big problem. What can be easier and uh, just uh, more effective in terms of everything from resources to money to everything, just then to talk to the people. It's free. Come and talk to people. Yeah. Ask them. It sounds so simplistic, but most people don't do that. No, but it's like, <laughs> it's, don't. It's, it's really simple. Look, you know What's really interesting, yesterday we had uh, Nishal, the co-founder of, I mean, he built three mega businesses in India. I mean, two in India, one in the first, first business he built, 20 million customers. Second business he built, uh, biggest crypto exchange in India, 15 million customers, hundreds of millions of revenue. And now he's building Shardium, which is a layer one protocol. And he said <laughs> these things, you just need to identify a problem yeah. and solve it, right? And the way you do that is first, you pr you might have the problem yourself and then you go and talk to people to see if other people have this problem. Yes, yes, exactly. It's as simple as that, right? And that's usually, but obviously it's a bit less sexy as a crazy founding story, right? Yeah, but, the but that's, that's what works because yeah. it's just practical. And at the end of the day, building a business is processes and practical and discipline repeat every day in and out and then the thing the, the 10 year overnight success magically happens right <laughs> to be honest with you i think that look one more like one more idea that i want to seed inside this like topic of the ideation and uh, speaking with customers and all that stuff uh, better you not talk with your friends because like better you not share your idea primarily with your friends. Why? Because they are going to support you. Mm. They are going to support you. They are going definitely, if it's your friends, they are going to tell you, man, this idea is crazy cool. Go and do it. But probably that's not the idea that needs to be solved. <laughs> that sometimes happens. And sometimes I got people coming to me and saying that, look, uh, I got this, 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 this. They told me that this idea is magic. And I'm like, are those guys your friends? Yes, they are my friends, best friends, like from, from school. No, that's not the case. People that are close to you, that care about you, they are not going to kill your idea on this like birth stage. Mm. You have to go to those guys who don't care about you. Mm. Like you are most random person to them. Uh, probably they will say that no, your idea is shit. You have to do like this better. You write, you note it down. Go to the next one. Note it down. Note the feedback down. You will, you will basically shape out something from it. Definitely, but not to your friends. That's the that's one of the problems that uh, it's better to point it out at this stage. If somebody is just sitting and writing the uh, steps that he's going now to take or she's not now going to take. Uh, to build a business, this is the one of the main steps, not the friends. Random individuals, just. So you go to these random individuals, you know, write down everything and you find the thing that these random individuals need. What do you or next? what they think, or what they think about your idea or just anything. To you, like, a lot of people may be asking now questions, where do you find those random individuals? First, like easier thing, you go to Telegram, you, uh, let's say you want to build something for the infrastructure of Dubai. You go to Telegram, you put uh, community Dubai, uh, German speaking community Dubai, Germans in Dubai, Russians in Dubai, uh, like uh, Indian uh, founders in Dubai. That's all of those communities that are there, literally open for anybody to enter. Mm -hmm. uh, playing football 24 seven. 
uh, just uh, keen to read books or anything like any communities out there you can find it on telegram you can find one person that is connected to some of those communities you just you uh, of course you don't jump straight ahead and say look i'm here and i have an idea give me your feedback you just you uh, get into the connect you get uh, you get into the connection you get into the like into the community and then you can those people will help you those people will help you to maybe even promote this idea Absolutely. or product when it's when it's going to be like realized then the next step uh, just always look i say that there are two people there are two types of people uh, first type of people is the ideation visualization leadership second type of people uh, technical people technical individuals hard working thinkers uh, the leadership can be f f like on the first type of people and second type of people as well probably the technical guys can be as well strong in terms of the leadership but every startup have to have these two types of people the f sales guy like the ideation guy who will make those in like other team ill with that idea and in a good way of course mm. <laughs> and the technical guy who will bring it into life if not himself then just he will know how to deal with people who will bring this idea into life mm. and that's why i always say that it's we are we will go a bit into deep into this topic because i think that that i always give this uh, like even to my little brother i always give this as a advice i always give that is this as an advice you don't have that's a common like that's a common mistake that people think that you need to have money to start the business you don't need to have any money to start the business literally and people will say like wow it's easy to still talk like this when you have some money some budget but literally like you don't have to have anything to start the business you need to have one co-founder that is stronger than you in this technical aspect mm. or sales aspect mm. and how do you find this co-founder is that look uh you've created let's start with you created the idea you created the you know the product that will solve the problem and all of that stuff you just now need to find one person which will believe in this idea as hard as you believe in it that's the tricky part Absolutely. of course that's not the part that you will start doing this today and uh, tomorrow it will be done absolutely but then you just uh, who is that person uh it it can be your friend it can be the guy who is as well keen to build something it just in like in realities of the world it might be not even like a guy from your area mm. from where you are located maybe you are located in dubai and you will find yourself a co-founder from india mm. which is super like crazy cool technologically mm. maybe you are a technical guy and you will find yourself a super cool united states salesperson who will just uh, scale it as never before mm. uh, you just you have to find it you have to find it going to the forums going to the communities again there are some websites to be honest with you i think that it's easy for users to find those websites where you can find actually co-founder there are websites where you can find co-founder and then you just you arrange several calls you see this idea you ask what do they think maybe they will think okay but let's implement this thing into this idea maybe let's twist it a bit so the next main thing you don't move forward without the co-founder i think that's interesting the case. your little brother told you yeah, but it's easy when you have money, right? Uh, it's not what he told me, but people can tell this. Okay. Of course. So how do you start a business when you have no money? You need to have the idea and the co-founder who believes in it. I'm like, I'm 100% okay. into this. And so, so then, okay, let's say you have done all that work. Then there is a big problem, which is in every business that starts. Uh, what we call the chicken and egg problem, right? Sure. How do you build a momentum and narrative to attract everyone's attention? The users, the investors, the employees. You build a product. You start building a product, you, two of you, 
or maybe let's say you get yourself a team, small team, let's say like two more guys to build a product. Maybe it will take you one month, two months, three months for like a half a year, maybe sometimes even eight months, you build a product. You build a product that you can show to somebody, to investors, to users, to early supporters. People, people are not likely keen to support like uh, big players are not likely keen to support just ideas it's like a lot of people have ideas show me something yeah yeah show, show me, something. me something that's what Absolutely. like i got told this thousand times if this <laughs> idea course. is cool this idea is cool and i think that all founders heard this idea is cool everything is cool the visualization that you've created is amazing show me something bring me something and we'll make it work show me you can execute yes. ideas are great but uh, yes. they're worthless right like, yeah. that's why it's really funny because i see a lot of people who kind of friends of mine who come for many years i have this amazing business idea i'm like okay what is it i can't tell you i can't tell you i mean my man i'm like you're never gonna build it because i know it because Otherwise, you would tell, talk about it yeah. because they don't understand that everything is in execution and the idea doesn't matter and no one will steal your idea. And even if someone steals your idea, it doesn't matter because it's all in the execution. Of course. Yeah, I always like to say that, look, there are minimum 20 teams right now while we are talking with you, doing the building same. what we are doing uh. with EC. To minimum 20, maybe 100 <laughs> all around the world. Maybe they're doing exactly the same, even like feature to feature, it identically. Maybe they're doing this. We will never know. Mm. Because like only 1% of those guys will be able to make momentum, marketing, really execute. And this, like this consists of a lot of things. Like being able to take the risk, being able to just not only of course it's cool when you are starting you feel a drive you feel adrenaline you are into you're entering something new but when this becomes a routine will you execute into routine that's the question and uh, just be being founder being founder is cool when people you, think yeah people think it's cool but it's not cool it, at all it's, to, to be honest with you, I still think that it's cool, okay. but it's hard. It's hard because, look, I'm like out of topic story. I've been to the barber and my barber told me, uh, man, how old are you? I've told 26 and he was like, oh, I'm 28. What are you doing? I've told I'm a founder of IT startup. Oh, so you're sitting in your computer for something like 11 hours per day? I'm like, yeah, maybe sometimes even 14 hours per day. Sometimes when it's hard, even 18 hours per day. Oh man, don't you feel like you're just uh, wasting your time while you're young? I just, I'm here cutting for something like uh, th three hours per day and uh, just, yeah, that's like, then I'm chilling with my friends and all that stuff. And I totally understand that point of view. That's like, that's just different. It's I'm just not saying that it's bad or it's better mm. or it's worth. It's just different. You have to have this mindset that you are working now to make your life a movie further down the line. <laughs> or just, as we said before, because I found my passion. Yeah, yeah, of course. Like, I'm not even thinking about, we talk often about that on this podcast, about burnout. People burn out not because they're working too much, but because they, they work on things that don't matter to them, right? Sure. And... Andrew Tate would say a lot of things that people don't agree with, but he actually talks a lot of truth if you kind of like make this effort to listen to what he says. One of the things he says is, if you wake up every morning and you're struggling all day and you're giving your best, you're gonna be happy. Yeah, and course. it doesn't matter if you're successful or not. It doesn't matter if the ultimate thing is gonna work or not. It's because you know you're giving your best sure. that you're happy. So your, I, you know, your goal might be, oh, I want to make my, my my life a movie fine but like if you think even more simply just the fact that you are you're vibing when you're sitting yeah, 14 hours course. a day in front of your laptop building your thing right and that's why it's your thing right and it's all linked to the passion and that may probably is vibing when probably is not vibing when he's cutting hair 
True. Most of them, some of them probably are, but yeah, the, of instead course. of doing only three hours, probably they would be 10 hours because they're just, that's my thing. I just love to make people look good, right? Yeah, of course. And to be honest with you, even like when I talk with my friends, like real friends who are just, they root for me and they just, man, don't you feel like a bit tired when you are sitting on the computer like for that long time? I always say, man, I put this for myself in the, in, in Japan, they call it Ikigai. Yeah, maybe Ikigai, you know, yeah. It's, Obviously. yeah, Ikigai. And I always like to those guys who don't really understand it, I always like recommend to read it. It's a thin book. It's a thin book. It's just basically uh, the T TLDR is if you will find something that will drive you, you will like uh, it will be just a part of your life. It is like for me, building a startup, it's not a work. I don't treat it like a work. Yeah. I'm not waking up thinking, okay, one more day at work. I'm thinking amazing because it's a game for me. Yeah. I'm today completing one more mission and <laughs> it's like, it's cool. It brought me to some like, for me to, like, it's an adventure. It's a game slash adventure that you meet a lot of cool people, you vibe together, you build something, you receive tasks you solve those tasks, you get benefits from it, you just uh, make life of people more interesting, you make your life more interesting, and you're not working. Mm -hmm. I'm not working. <laughs> I just, it's for me, when you get like, when you put this for yourself, like you're working, then of course, after the work, you need to calm down. If you are not working, when, why do you need to calm down? <laughs> if you are just like really vibing, if you are doing your thing, you just i think that coming down doesn't make sense doesn't exactly exactly that's you know here very often kevin you should calm down you're not gonna sustain i'm like i'm fucking vibing like sometimes i'm suffering yes sometimes i'm not sleeping enough you know, sometimes i'm complaining a bit because you know complaining a bit gives you some dopamine but like it but i'm not fucking coming down i'm just gonna accelerate even more until no one can follow me anymore <laughs> This like really covers kind of like the next one, which is kind of overcoming the hustle. You know, building a business is extremely hard, consumes you 24 seven for years. I mean, except for you, you had one that lasted nine months, but <laughs> normally that's not normal, yeah, right? That, that doesn't work usually. You, you're, because your startup becomes your baby, right? So what happens often is that founders, that's happen, that happens very often, founders, they suffer so much that they lose love for what they're building. How do you keep a healthy relationship with your baby? Uh, look, uh, that's unpopular opinion. Uh, I'm not saying that uh, that's the fact, uh, but I always say that, look, if you stop loving what you're building, that's done. That's done? Yeah, that's done. If, uh, look, if that stops driving you, you can't, uh, your team will not receive that portion of drive from yourself and startup will slowly, slowly, slowly die. Mm. That's the case. And I've seen a lot of guys in late 40s and they are still doing the, th the startup that they've started doing in something like 30s and it doesn't give any result, but they just can't give up. Mm. Sometimes it's better to give up. Not like you shouldn't give up naturally, but you should feel like something can be changed. And this is, I think that's uh, in that case to lie to yourself that, look, yes, I'm loving it. I'm doing this because I love it. It's a weakness. It's a clear weakness. Mm. You have to be stronger. You have to be more honest with yourself. If you stopped loving what you're doing, Probably don't give up fundamentally, but give up this idea. Mm. Give up this idea or maybe add a twist into it. Maybe uh, search for some more, like more driving thing now, because just to breathe, breathe new life into this idea. Yeah, because not only the business is going to die, but you're also going to completely burn out as a person because you don't like what you're doing anymore. And that's, that's the big problem. That's the worst thing ever that can happen, but it happens a lot. 
in in order to prevent this from happening like in the beginning i think that's the one topic that we wanted to as well cover the momentum i think that once you are giving the once you are receiving the positive feedback uh whether it's from the community from the supporters from investors from anybody positive feedback acceleration momentum results numbers metrics that are going up all this uh gives you like uh charges you charges you charges absolutely when you are when you are basically it's a kick every time eh? it's a kick every and time and you yeah. need to kind of look for these kicks exactly. to be kind of high most of the time yeah because the high will make that you don't feel all the pain that comes with building this thing right because you're kind of numb to it but absolutely you need the small rewards and the small kicks along the way absolutely otherwise it's not possible so yeah basically uh product you uh just f build this product you st start seeding it into uh people's heads uh seeding it into the communities first like even without the marketing without the marketing just yourself personally you go to uh, groups you go to discord you go to forums you go to like anywhere you start seeding it you start looking for early supporters and then here is where uh, the power of the meaning of the feedback of those people it will be uh, <clears throat> it will be enough for you to get this additional charging always i think if you start scaling even more the more like it's like a uh, i tell it to you like this if you start uh, like surrounding yourselves by supporters and that crowd gets bigger 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 that's like uh that's where you can get your energy from mm. those guys will th those guys will stand for you if you will suffer if you will uh, experience something yeah. uh, just some bad times or something like this even at a smaller scale just having a co-founder is extremely important yeah, for course. that because sometimes you will be a bit down but your co-founder is the one who will be like we're building the best thing in the world yeah. and almost believing more than you at that moment and then it gives you a kick of again course. like oh man there is someone else who believes in that even more than me that's amazing i built the smallest kind of scale of a community which is two people me and my co-founder right and then it's very important actually because we are all humans right and we will have ups and downs one of the single most important factors to success as a founder is your ability to identify the right people and then build connection with them. The problem is that the people who you need and want to talk to, they are above you. And they probably don't have a lot of bandwidth, they don't have a lot of time, and they probably don't necessarily want to talk to you because they don't know you. How do you get in circles of people who are above you so you can elevate yourself to get into the next dimension? Uh, look, two ways. First way, that uh, just consistency, consistent outreach. I could send 300 messages per day to get to all of those people, both in LinkedIn, Twitter, Telegram, everywhere. I would source contacts. I just, I understand that somebody who is looking at us right now, who is watching this, might say, what, like, did that guy never heard about privacy or something like this? Fine. It's like, it's the downside. But then how would you... If he's a true entrepreneur, yeah. he's going to appreciate the hustle. Yeah, sure. For sure. sure, sure, sure. Of for course. sure. But look, yeah. I always say that, uh, but how do you uh, achieving things if you are not trying? You have to try to achieve things. It's like it's even if uh, some like to be honest with you, man. Really, some guys blocked me. <laughs> really, I can I can say this out loud. They it, some guys blocked me, and at the moment, like I've just one one time, I've told my co-founder, I was like, those guys, they have two possibilities, or they are going to answer, or they will have to block me. That's the thing. I love That's the mindset. The I love the mindset That's and I awesome. have a very diff a very similar approach, which is like, you almost take it as a game, like, you don't want to answer to me, I'm gonna freaking piss you off until you react. Sure. Which and is answering or telling me to fuck off, yeah. right? Or just like blocking me, exactly. But as, but as well, just, <laughs> you don't have to say, hey, hey, how are you? 
what's up Obviously. what's up <laughs> you just you find something to you just start with hey hope you're doing great we are building this thing here uh by see your extensive experience we want to get your feedback mm. silence look we have since the last time we spoke we have uh, <coughs> hired two world-class experts and we at the moment need an advice from somebody like like you uh it would be great to jump on a call with you silence silence <laughs> just wanted to follow up with you because maybe it got lost in shuffle uh just still would be cool to have your opinion on this thing silence we've just onboarded 100 new people <laughs> to the community and we at the moment have two uh customers who are paying and we have like we are scaling a bit so just maybe right now it will be cool for you to speak with us and you just man you can constantly find something even like look uh, we see that you have the photo uh in uh, madrid we have a headquarter in madrid next time when you will be in madrid we can meet up in person with our team but right now maybe you will have a 15 minutes for a quick call mm -mm -mm. to give your feedback your feedback will be very like appreciated by our team okay so consistency that's one Second. but in that but in that example you are a taker, right? Um, you, you're yeah. asking yes, for a favor. Yes, yes, yes. Second example is where you're a giver. But to become a giver, you need to be interesting to those people. I'll give you as well a quick example from my own life. My like friend, he uh, he was in the real estate business in Kazakhstan. Uh, but he was he was trying to outreach to the big like serious guy in that real estate uh, business sphere and uh, just it was not successful for him to to out to like to get in contact then he was like but this he knew that this guy is really needed to him mm. uh, but then he just uh, he made one cool thing and you will understand why i'm telling you about this because this is a playbook basically how you can make it he like he seen that that guy bought a tesla he seen that th that guy bought a Tesla and th that my friend thought that, OK, uh, I'll get into the community of that guy by making a Tesla holders club. I'll make a Tesla holders club. I will arrange events for those guys. I will make a trip to the mountains on Tesla's like a road show, okay. basically. Okay. And I will collect all the guys of that level of of that status. Of course, I'll be the probably the poorest one from those guys. Probably like I'm not the most interesting person in the room with those guys, but I will just make this to make them benefit from my existence in that community. And it was a success. Of course. It was a success. Of course. That's exactly what I'm doing. I do this podcast and then I do sure. private dinners and mastermind that no one knows about. I mean, people will know about it now, right? And I invite all the biggest guests on this podcast, put them in a room together, make them, in, I introduce them to each other. And then at some point you become the hub. Yes. You and when you become, contact. when you become the hub, you went from no one to being almost like, fuck, what the food, like, we need this guy. We need this yeah. guy as an advisor, we need this guy as an investor, we need this guy as a, and then you can build, you have the hub, right? That's because the you have the hub, way. That's you, the ha you have the hub and then because you have the hub, like you have infinite possibilities to build businesses or things around that. Yep, that's, that's the case. You just uh, always, you, you can give a value to anyone. Mm. That's, you just have to live with this idea. You can give a value now to Elon Musk if you do enough research. Mm. I believe in it. Yeah. You can, if you will be doing the first uh, like uh, type of outreach that I was telling about to the top tier guys, you will not reach like this. Yeah. To the top tier guys, like top notch guys, you will reach only by making yourself interesting or valuable. Providing That's value. And when you become the point of contact, let's say like in, on your example, or an example of that, my guy who is in Kazakhstan, when you get a, to be a point of contact of all those top tier guys, 
uh, it's like you are not even on that level with those guys. You are for some of those guys, you're even higher. Which makes no I, sense. I mean, when you think about it, you're like, fuck, man, these guys, they think I'm the I'm cool, right? Yeah. But, it, I mean, but in you are cool yeah. because like uh, why uh, like everybody could do this. Yeah. But that's you who did it. Yeah. Like I like the, a lot of people s- say like to say this, uh, but everybody could. Yeah, everybody could. <laughs> 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 With the little smile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody could. Could. <laughs> dot dot dot. <laughs> so you're. This fits in really well with the next one because you start trying to provide value and you are no one, right? People don't know you. But then you, if you manage to like kind of build this momentum on like value creation, people start to kind of take them into their community sure. or, or you build your own community of these people. This helps you elevate your personal brand, right? Sure. What's your approach to personal branding? Uh, I think that's the superpower first. That's a clear superpower to me. Uh, nowadays, if you are not uh, afraid to be doxxed, if you are not afraid to speak out mm. loud, if you are not afraid of your own thoughts, you have to build your personal brand. Uh, I know a lot of examples where just startups got successful without the uh, founder building personal brand, but I know a lot more examples where startups got successful because of the personal brand of the founder. And uh, just my approach to personal brand, you have to Basically, that's one more. You have several tasks. You have a task to, like team, maintaining the team, uh, just motivation, maintaining the momentum into the community, maintaining the product, building the product. The, pro- the personal branding is like one of the tasks of a real builder. I think that like I'm pretty sure that it has to be like this. What's interesting is there is some people who understand per- that personal brand is almost everything and they take it to the next level. Yeah. For example, we just released the uh, Luke Belmar, who understood that he hired a CEO for his business, and he's full time on personal branding now, because it's a mega job in itself of course, of course. to build a real personal brand and be online, being seen by everywhere, building this content machine. But then he knows that what's that's what's gonna attract a hundred, a thousand times more business because of the personal brand. That if you don't have this key figure, almost cult-like personality, which in crypto is also very important, yeah, right? Sure. If you don't have that, people will not care. Whereas if you have that, people will care and will be, we want to get involved one way or another. Yeah, sure. And so some people, they they just say, oh, I'm going to the next level. I'm the face of this company or this project. I'm going to do that full time. I'm going to hire a CEO to replace me for all the day to day tasks. Sure. I think that uh, first of all, it's like it's uh, super valuable for you because people feel like they know you. Mm. People feel it's always uh, look, I've talked, uh, like, again, example, I've talked with the CEO of a big company. He, like, he, we have a lot of advisors in EC, and uh, we just, uh, I, I'm not afraid to ask. I'm not afraid to get an advice. I think that's, like, that's what will give you a boost, like, X, uh, 10X boost. Uh, just, uh, and uh, one time I got uh, told that, look, it's always easier for people to support you when they feel like they know you if it's Absolutely. just if it's just the cool logo uh it can be like the most stylish logo ever but people people are following founders a lot of people are following founders but not a lot of people are following brands absolutely you want to follow someone you can ide- identify with sure. it's normal sure it's just normal but you want somebody that you can identify yourself with, that you can relate yourself with. You fall in love with the personality. You just, uh, I think that uh, there is, again, there are different ways of building your personal brand. You can build your personal brand like, look, uh, like a, you are a role player, a uh, role model. I mean, you're a role model, you are, boy, here is this, all the success stories and all that stuff. I, when I build my personal brand, I'm about transparency. Mm. I'm always about transparency. I think that transparency is the, is the key. It's a bit long term, uh, mm. the road. It's not that powerful in terms of like with the with the success story, you can become star in one day. With the transparency, people need to taste you. People need to uh, uh, see that look. Uh, 
okay, this guy shows something that I can relate myself with and all that stuff. But again, as well, one interesting thing about the personal branding is that you have to show your uh, path, basically. And I call this for myself the path of a hero. All people like a path of the hero and the journey of the hero is showed in movies, in blockbusters, in super like top sell, top sold books, in sometimes even some aspects of a journey of a hero can be seen in like religion. Yeah. People like to see the how you handle tasks. Hero will have its difficult times. Hero will have its uh, downsides, its fuck ups, shit situations. But hero is hero and hero will win. And this is what people like. Basically, they like to uh, root for you, maybe some of them. Some people will like to uh, laugh when you fuck up. But people like the journey of the hero. Nobody likes when it's super common and boring. That's why everything, just everything and everybody has a way of the hero, a journey of the hero. And that's basically, I think that's it's the most uh, uh, useful methodology on which you can build your personal brand. Yeah. Just showing away, showing your journey, uh, continuing your journey, showing everything transparent. If you fuck up, show that you fuck yeah. up. Uh, just if you succeed, show that you succeed. It's like the way of the, the, of the hero, I think. So you're documenting your journey, basically. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You told me the biggest struggle of everyone is wanting the best for themselves short term. But by definition, this goes against the great benefits of looking long term, obviously. How can someone develop low time preference and a deep understanding of the power of delay gratification? Uh, look, until you will try it yourself, you will not understand it, I think. Uh, but you just, uh, of course, you can uh, always count on different examples on how that guy did it or how this happened here. But until you try it yourself, you will not understand it. Uh, I think that, look, uh, for myself, I just, uh, I think that it's always, uh, you just, you have to listen to yourself. Uh, if, for example, one day I will wake up and uh, I will tell myself, Let, look, uh, let's uh, create something uh, like a event or something like this that can uh, give a short term boost right now, right here, I will do this. Probably this will be needed at that time in my life. But right now, I'm, I think that consistency, long-term vision, just uh, every day making what you, are, what you love, that's the thing. Uh, but it's like it's the... I'll tell you, again, probably if in, on my side, it's like this because I solve a lot of tasks. I solve a lot of different tasks. Right now in our team, of course, we have the marketing lead, we have the my CTO, which is co-founder, we have the, like the guys who deal with the community, but in overall, like in overall, I'm the CEO, I'm the chief investment officer, I'm the uh, HR, I'm the, uh, like, I'm on the top of the marketing, I'm the CBDO, having all those calls. And as well, I'm trying to build my personal brand. So uh, in order to uh, just uh, maximize in something, I would need to sacrifice other parts to build my personal brand. I'm not ready right now to sacrifice because I'm a builder in first place. Mm. And then only mm. if it's going to stick, like if the personal brand is going to stick, of course, I'm, I'm putting the effort into it. I just uh, in something like three months, I've really boosted my uh, social media presence in Twitter. I'm into those communities. I just I try to get insights on how to build personal brand even better and all of that stuff. But I'm not going to say that I'm an expert in this right now. Mm -hmm. I can say that I'm an expert in how to lead the team. I can say that I'm an expert in how to build the community and all that stuff. But uh, I will need me some time uh, to become an expert in personal brand. And that's that's basically my my vision on this. Probably one of the best ways to be to build your personal brand is understanding authenticity, right? And I really want to talk about that because it's very important and it's something that we both share. But I want to do it in a very different fashion. So I just 
we'll use a few quotes and let you comment them. The first one is, authenticity starts in the heart. I agree. Uh, you just have to listen to your gut. That's the thing. Uh, be honest with yourself, be transparent. That's the authenticity, I think. Authenticity is magnetic. That's that's right. That's like 100% right. Uh, but I don't know how this... Look, I didn't really know how to explain this, but there are people who are just attracting. Not because they're like uh, doing something special, but because they have something that makes them not uh, similar to others. S like in, in, it can be in any way. Maybe because they are built different, thing, different things. Maybe because they are just, uh, I think that look, uh, it really, it really attracts. I can say it like this. When you are authentic, it attracts people. It attracts supporters. It attracts everybody. Why do you think that's the case? Do you think it's because a lot of people would want to be authentic, but because they're maybe, I don't know, insecure, they want to please or be seen as, I don't know, they're cool. They're not able to be their authentic selves. And they admire people who just don't give a fuck, basically. Uh, look, uh, just I think that that's uh, the authenticity, the real authenticity is, the, is a hard topic. I'll tell you why. Because uh, people might think that, okay, I'm being authentic, but you are being like this because you've seen something and you mm. think that people will <laughs> think that it's cool. But just when you are trying to be authentic, you're, you're really lost. not. You're lost. Yeah. <laughs> it's not something that you will try to do. It's something like you can't say, oh, I'm authentic. <laughs> people will say to you. It's like it's something that you will never say that, okay, I think that I'm clever. That's if you think that you're clever, you're stupid. People will tell, okay, that guy is clever, that guy is wise. And this is something, again, with authenticity. I think that uh, if when people start saying that, okay, that guy is authentic, or just even it's like the big the big evidence of authenticity is when those guys will say this when you're not around. Mm. What do you say? Yeah. Yes. If you're authentic, you can escape competition because there's only one you. Right, right. Totally on the same page about this. Just uh, it's like but authentic people, like real authentic people, they have supporters. They have people who will go on the war for them. That's the thing. And uh, of course, you will win any competition because you have supporters who will just, if they will think that somebody disagrees with you or doesn't like you, they will just, they will uh, stand there for you. They will just, and this is like people, users, community, if, if you got them, you want the competition mm -hmm. because everything that we are building, we are building it not for ourselves. Mm -hmm. Why would you build a product for yourself? You are building a product or doing anything, even if you're doing the personal brand, even the personal brand, if the personal brand is your main thing that you're doing, you're doing this for the community. We talked about meditation in the beginning. Meditation helps people understand themselves. And Aristotle said, knowing yourself is the beginning of all wisdom. Why is it, why is self-awareness so important in entrepreneurship? Uh, self-awareness helps you to understand your superpowers. And based on those superpowers, you can start building, start becoming the best version of entrepreneur that you can be. Only when you understand your superpowers. If I would think that I'm the uh, wisest technical brain, not understanding a lot of technical things, I've lost. Mm. What's the moment you realized, oh man, I need to work on your self-awareness thing. I'm not really good at it. Uh, I think that it wasn't a very particular moment. I think that uh, I try to read a lot. I try to read a lot and I think that, look, uh, in several books that I've read, uh, just I think that there were like practices of building self-awareness and uh, just based on some of those practices, you start understanding that, look, you didn't think about it. 
you just maybe you are well in self-awareness but you just didn't think about it uh, and when it's just like it goes how it goes i will not think about it that's not the case about myself mm. i'm the type of the person that okay if there is something like this i will try to be like be good at it if i think that it's like it catches my attention basically this is a crypto podcast and in crypto people you know most people are in crypto for one reason make money and so for that they like to hear the builders in the space talk about you know sort of alpha and what their favorite projects are so i know you haven't been in crypto for super long but you're building every day you're, bu you're building an amazing project and you're probably also aware of what's happening around you what are your favorite two or three other projects in the space and why oh i'll tell it to you like this i will not specify projects but i think that i can specify the narratives i think that the i think it's like it's a popular opinion but uh, still i super believe in this opinion uh, what will move crypto forward is rwas and not in real world assets yes real world assets i think that as soon as other people will understand that look just i'll put it like this uh, but just i'll a bit distinct of the i'll be a bit distinct from the question itself but i'll tell you like this i think that uh, the blockchain is a technology people outside crypto they think that crypto is a blockchain crypto is not blockchain basically crypto is one of the use cases mm. of blockchain and people outside of crypto they think that outside of let's say blockchain uh, people outside of the blockchain they think okay those guys are just uh playing around with uh, some internet money and because of which is the case for other people yes because <laughs> no, <laughs> just let's say it like this let's be honest <laughs> yeah but people think people outside of the blockchain think that okay crypto is the only use case crypto is scam uh because of the cryptocurrency a lot of scams happen because of the uh, just because of people showing that you can use this uh, technology only as an instant key like the money button basically yeah and blockchain is not about it that's the case blockchain is an instrument very powerful instrument and the, i think that the next thing that will show people that blockchain is very powerful is real world assets tokenized real world assets any uh, just any wisely done usage of tokenized real world assets rwa is as a i won't even say narrative because it's like narrative is it's here and then there is different narrative yeah, yeah. it's basically i'd say as a sphere as a sphere rwas will be will be moving forward i'd say the blockchain even and uh, i know a lot of guys who are s building super cool projects right now in, in real world assets in real world assets yeah in real world assets and but some of those projects are not even live yet some of those projects are just in beta testing and uh, it takes unfortunately uh, right now it takes a lot of legal stuff and it takes a lot of just uh, b paperwork i'll tell you like this but uh, i think that that's the next uh, the next use case for like for wise individuals for uh, even on the government level i'll tell it like this but as well i'm super bullish on the of things that will bring new audience of retailers and mass audience to the crypto and i think that what guys are doing in gaming sector game uh is as well super bullish because i think that uh those are the guys who didn't stop when everybody stopped mm. uh it was a moment on the crypto market when i was raising i was fundraising and people told me look do you really think that you need blockchain into this there is no we market. hear that so much mm. yeah yeah there is no money in in this and uh, like everybody like i won't say that everybody stopped but a lot of people stopped building what they were building a lot of people stopped doing what they were doing in the sphere but i've seen a lot of teams who were doing gaming projects and they didn't stop because they understand that look in gaming that's really easy to mask that it's using blockchain but then when users will deep dive they will understand that they are using blockchain mm. and yeah well because i'm not the most familiar with the gaming sure. sector like 
So if you have to tell me, hey, like, look at this team, they're doing something interesting, and this is why. You can just uh, two examples. First thing you can you can check Godzilla. Second thing you can Gunzi- check Godzilla. Godzilla. What and do you they can do? Check Shrapnel. Two like uh, b- I won't say that they're the only ones, but those guys are a good example of uh, teams that are really building. They are really building. It's like they are doing something good. I'm not even like let's say I'm in, in touch with the Shrapnel team, but I'm not even in touch with the Godzilla team. But I know that like those guys are building. I can see this. Those guys are true builders. They are ill with those ideas, and it's cool. It's just beautiful to look at it. And yep, I see, I think that the guys like those ones, maybe not even these two examples, but guys like this, they will bring additional let's say. Uh, minimum 10 million people into crypto as well 100 percent. and in the w- real world asset sector like i have a friend of mine actually uh he's building um, a platform where you can collateralize watches and then obviously the goal is to go further than watches it's called open chrono it's very interesting uh and they kind I've of like i think that i've heard about this one is there another application because real world asset is very wide sure, right sure. that you are really interested by, because you think it makes more sense and that specific team is actually tackling that project there are there are various ones I just I think that uh, several several examples guys at 4k do an amazing job uh, watches.io as well those guys are f- finding and uh, f- found a good use case for the blockchain with real world assets uh, there are several others the cattle finance cool guys the colony uh, on Polygon, guys, mm-hmm. super, super, like uh, early uh, into the process, into into the process, but they're as well doing the cool marketplace for uh, anything dealing with tokenized real world assets. We are as well dealing with the, we are gamified marketplace for, for of course digital assets tokens, but as well for tokenized rare WAs. Mm-hmm. So we are just we are we will be trying our best to bring additional demand to that sector. So that's what we are doing. And uh, a lot more, a lot more. Even to be honest with you, you can't name all of those guys. A, a lot of cool teams are sitting and building right now while, while we are speaking with you. What's your key takeaway from today's podcast? Uh, so one thing that I'm going to write myself down into the notes and I will practice is meditation. A lot of people can change me, your life, like literally. Yeah, yeah. Gonna change I, your I life. think that I think that's the I think that's the game that will be a game changer for myself because look, I'll I feel this. I feel this and a lot of people told this to me, uh, but just uh, I think that it's I even thought about this like yesterday. That's the case. And now we're speaking about this with you. And this was like literally the first thing that you've told me. And I was like, okay, I've just, I actually, even like we were talking with you, I had this idea in my backlog, like meditation. Okay, I'll put it here. I'll unpack it when I'll get back to my apartment. What's your message to people who, because you just said, okay, you kind of convinced me. I mean, you don't need to be convinced, but like, I'll do it, right? A lot of people, they really struggle to do things, to do the thing, right? Which makes the whole difference. What's your kind of as a takeaway today and wrap up for this uh, amazing session? What's your message to people who know what they should do, but don't do it for one reason or another? Just do it. (laughs) It's like, okay, it's, it's, it would be easy if I say it like this, but then uh, search for cool, you, like search for cool success stories. Mm. Get motivated. Get like if look. I always say it like this, and uh, just it will be insightful in two different ways. I'll tell it to you like this: If you have built a product and you can get one person to use it, it's there is no unique person in the whole world. Mm. All person, like everybody in the world, they follow several patterns of behavior. If you've tapped into one person who bought your product or is using your product, at least it will be like a million same type of person. You can just, you need to search for this type of person. But then again, if you search for somebody who is successful in something what you want to do, it's not like no unique person. Like you will be successful as well. Just do something. So, so 
because the, the, the fact of, let's say I want to start something or I want to do something, meditating, gym, a business, change my career, whatever. It's hard, right? We all kind of, it's easy to get stuck. Depends on your personality, but more people get stuck. So instead of looking at the task, I need to meditate every day, which some days I'm not going to want to, I'm too tired, or I'll try to find excuses or start working on new, something new or going to gym every day or before you start, understand why you're doing it. Of course. And if you understand why, like the bigger picture, that's your goal, right? What is your goal? And if you, if you know what the goal is and there is something that's concretely useful for you as a person to make you wealthier or happier or healthier, then you'll go through the thing because you know sure. that everything is a process and to get there, actually, it's just repeating every day the same thing over and over again. When it goes well, good. When it doesn't go well, I still do it and so on and so forth. Amazing. Amazing.